Hi guys, welcome back. Well, it's Thursday, and as I said in the last story, we we're going to look at the story of the Garden of Gethsemane this week. Now, I've got no green screen, I've got no sort of technology today, because the Garden of Gethsemane is quite, the best way to describe it, it's quite a poignant story. Now, that's a very, very, very big word. And what that means basically, okay, it's quite moving, it kind of, it's sort of thing that gets your emotions going. So I thought we'd be a bit more serious today. Okay, so we won't be any jokes about guinea pigs or pictures of donkeys, okay? It's just going to be us telling a story and hopefully we can learn something from it. Before I go on, again, big shout out to everyone who's watching us. Thank you, you know, loads of people starting to share these um, stories with their friends and everything. And I know there's particularly some people messaged me and said, Craig, you left us out when you said thank you last week. You know you are, okay? So, welcome and hello, you know. Okay, fantastic. Right. Let's get back to our story. Can I give you a bit of background of the story first? First of all, okay, we've had Palm Sunday where Jesus rode into Jerusalem and all the people were waving the branches and shouting hosannas. Some of you actually sent in some photos on our Kids Own Facebook page of the palm branches. Well done, you guys, for making them, okay? And we had all that, Jesus coming into Jerusalem. Now we're in a whole different sort of part of the Easter story. We've got the fact that Judas, who was one of Jesus' disciples, has already taken the decision to betray Jesus. He's already gone to the leaders and the, the religious um, leaders of the day, the Pharisees. Remember we said about them, they challenged Jesus, didn't they, in the, in the story of Palm Sunday. And he's already gone to the Pharisees and he's decided that he will betray Jesus. He sold out his friend. And all that has started. Jesus has gone then to a, a special meal with his disciples. What people know it as the Last Supper. And even Judas was there and he sat down with them. And while he was eating this last meal with them together, celebrating the Jewish festival of the Passover, he took some bread and he broke the bread. And that was part of, of him trying to explain again to his disciples that soon he was going to die. And his body, like the bread, was going to be hurt. It was going to be injured in his death. And then he took some, some wine, some grape juice, and he drank that. And that was a little bit like... Um, his blood, because he was trying to show them that people would do things to him that would make his body bleed. Now, if you've been to a church before, maybe you've heard of this as called communion or you've heard of it called mass. But this is where that story and where that thing comes from that you do in that church. OK, it's from this last supper where Jesus was explaining to disciples how soon he was going to die. Judas was there as well. During that meal, Jesus kind of lets the, the, the secret out about what Judas was going to do and Judas has fled the meal is over and Jesus takes his disciples to a special place and this is the story of Gethsemane he takes them to the Mount of Olives and on the Mount of Olives he chooses three of his disciples now we've already come across these three disciples before if you remember they went up the Mount of Transfiguration with him in our second story now I wonder can you remember their names now we're going to listen okay now, obviously, I can't hear you, but I'm imagining that someone has just said Peter. And I'm imagining that someone has just said James. And for, thank you, yes, and someone just said John. That's right, Peter, James and John. They go with him a little bit further into the Garden of Gethsemane. Now, out of all the stories linked to the Easter story, this is probably my favourite because this is probably the one that gets me the most emotional. Not that I'm an emotional sort of guy, but it does. Because in this garden, Jesus makes an amazing choice. And we're going to speak a little bit about choices at the end of the story. Jesus goes on with Peter, James and John and they go into the garden and he says that he gives them one simple task to do. He said, look, I need to go and pray because I'm overwhelmed with sadness and worry about what's going to happen to me. So I want to pray. Will you stay here and pray with me as I go on into the garden further? They said, of course, of course you will. It's the least we can do, Jesus. So Jesus goes on and prays. What he prays, we'll come back to in a little bit. He comes back to his disciples and they're flat out asleep. It's late. They're tired. They're asleep. Jesus says, come on, couldn't you just pray with me? He wakes them up. They say, of course, of course we will, of course we will. And off he goes to pray again. He comes back and guess what? Yes, they're asleep again. 
He says, come on, please. I'm so overwhelmed. I'm so sad. I need you to pray with me. He goes off. He comes back and they're asleep again. He wakes them for the third time. And they say, oh God, yes, yes, sorry, sorry. Yes, this time, this time we'll do it. And Jesus looks up and he says, it's too late now. Because the people are coming to arrest me. Now, tomorrow we're going to look at the Good Friday story. Now, in that Good Friday story, we'll start by doing the arrest of Jesus. I don't want to go on about that now because I want to talk about something really important. Just at the end of our story. Again, much shorter story today. A lot of you saying amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord to that one. But a lot shorter today. But what I want to talk about is what Jesus prayed. Because Jesus prayed a very special prayer that included a, an amazing choice. You see what Jesus prayed? He prayed to his father and he said, Father, I know what's going to happen to me. I know. I can see. I know what I have to do. Please, if there is any way possible, I don't want to do it. Take it away from me. Give it to someone else. That's basically what he's praying. I know that's not exactly what the Bible says, but that's basically what Jesus was praying. And then he says something that changes the whole face of humanity. It gives us hope when we didn't have hope. At that point, no hope. And then Jesus prays, but God, I know what you want me to do. And I won't do what I want to do. I'm going to do what you've asked me to. And that was it. From that moment onwards, Jesus was going to the cross. From that moment onwards, nothing could have stopped Jesus dying on the cross on Good Friday. That was the choice he made. The choice not to do what he wanted to do. Not to do what we call his own will. What I want to do, yeah? And we all want to do sometimes what we want to do, let's be honest. He decided to do what his father, what God had asked him. And this is interesting, what God had asked him to do. God didn't command Jesus to die for you and for me. God asked him to. And he willingly said yes. And do you know why? Because he loves us. That's it. That's why. That's why he made that choice. Because he loves you and because he loves me. Brilliant, isn't it? Brilliant story today. Okay, fantastic. Now, tomorrow we're going to look at Good Friday. So, hopefully by about sort of the evening sort of time, tune in. Okay, again, have a listen to our story. It's going to be interesting. There's going to be lots of kind of detail that maybe you could talk about. And again, have a think about maybe doing an Easter picture, something like that. Maybe you could draw a picture of the Garden of Gethsemane. Maybe you could draw a picture of what we talk about tomorrow. Okay, so stay safe and I'll speak to you tomorrow. Bye, guys.